Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the multiverse, wherever you may be listening, on this earth, some parallel earth, or some place that has these videos but doesn't have the comics to go with them. My name is Rogue Convoy, and welcome to week five of Ultimate Mayhem. And so with the rise of popularity in this particular character, and the series coming to its end next week, I figured now is the best time to do the character known as Peacemaker. I kind of gave a hint in my previous video of when I mentioned, do you want to taste it? The, it's the current theme song of the TV show. A uh, little bit of fun trivia, a little bit of fun spin on things, and a good iceberg of trivia. So sit back, settle in, and let's take a deep dive into the man known as Peacemaker. Please note that we will only be talking about Christopher Smith. We are not actually talking about Peacemaker number two, which is known as Mitchell Smith. Uh, we may actually come back to that later on as we're going. So to give a little bit of backstory on this character, uh, Peacemaker did not start with DC Comics. He started in the comic company known as Charlton Comics in the late 1960s. So, and he first appeared as a team, part of a team known as the Fighting Five in their issue number 40. And he was part of that team until 19, until issue 45. He did not, he did become popular as a character, so he basically gained popularity because he was a uh, standalone character who did crazy things, and was given his own series that lasted five issues on top of his original run. So basically, he did five episodes with the team, and then he's doing five on his own, so he did ten issues altogether. Peacemaker was one of the particular comic's biggest heroes. So their character, they had quite a few characters come out of it, uh, but Peacemaker was the biggest one at that point in time. Peacemaker and the other Charlton, Charlton Comics characters were acquired by DC in 1983. So this company was going under during 1983, or during the 1980s, and eventually folded in 1986, but these characters were bought out at that time. They did not make their debuts until 1985 in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Peacemaker made his first debut on June 6, 1985, in Crisis on Infinite Earths number 6. So he appeared... Two years after they were bought, and also in the big Crisis on Infinite Earths events after the fact. So, the Charlton character comics have been living on Earth, their existence on Earth number four, and along with Earth 1, 2, S, and X, they were merged into one Earth known as Earth Prime and given a new story to begin with. So, after the event's done, Peacemaker is given his own Crisis, or given his own comics in four episode run. From January to April of 1988. So an interesting side note here. The, the main characters of the Charlton comic series were supposed to be the original Watchmen. So Blue Beetle, uh, Captain Adam, Peacemaker were all originally supposed to be Watchmen. But DC said no to that because they believed that those characters would be unusable for future use after the fact. Now, so DC asked Alan Moore to create his own characters. And Peacemaker was inspiration for the comedian. And after the reboot of the New 52, basically Peacemaker was returned to his own Earth. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Peacemaker, or more so the origin stories of the TV show variation and the comic variation. All right. So Christopher Smith, as we know him as Peacemaker number one, was is the youngest son of Augie Smith and an unknown mother. They lived in a small town of Evergreen, Washington, and Augie is very well known. He's very strong, but he's also a well known racist. The man basically, yeah, inspired. I mean, if you watch the show, you've seen a little bit of that in action. And his own personal views basically tormented his son, um, showing that, yeah, his father's a racist, but he doesn't believe what he, his father believes. Uh, Augie, tra though, trained his sons to become kill a killer against his will. Um, basically, didn't want him to. He didn't want to become a killer, but his father was like, "Well, screw it. We're doing it anyway." During one instance, he made Christopher kill a man by stabbing him to death. So basically, obviously killed him and stabbed him. Christopher also grew up with his brother Keith, who is the firstborn, and the two bonded over music. So we don't see much of Keith during. The TV series, we only get the glimpses of it, given the fact that Keith is dead most of the time. And we somehow don't see his death in uh, the light it should be. 
So, and then at some point, Chris, when he was a child, his older brother died under unknown circumstances, which we believe Christopher might have involved, been involved in. So, during episode 7, apparently, they show the actual what had happened during this fight. It was apparently a big fight, and the two of them got into it, and yeah. But I'm not there yet, so I don't know what actually happened. I All I know is what I've seen from the previous episodes that I've only watched. So, I'm only up to episode 4 myself. And during his childhood, he ended up meeting his future friend, Vigilante, or Adrian Chase. Eventually, Chris becomes the hero we know as Peacemaker, having grown unstable and becoming a diplomat who believed he could achieve his goal of peace by any means necessary. This meant he would kill anyone who stood in the way of getting his peace. So basically, he would kill anybody who stood in the way of, if he was trying to get peace for a certain thing, Obviously, he would kill anybody who was standing in his way. And this is where he began his mission of peace by any means. Peacemaker managed to capture and kill Kite Man as his first person who was stealing the Blackheart Ruby. So he was catching a guy stealing. So believe, at this point, we believe he was a superhero who has done just basically capture people and helped out. Also, his costume was like red, red shirt, blue epaulets, white kind of thing. But then he also had the double piece in the middle. He also wore a helmet that is basically chrome. It looks like a giant toilet seat, kind of full of bowl, depending on how you look at it. And, yeah, they basically said, then they made fun of it during Suicide Squad. And so, during his time as a hero, he met Wonder Woman, Matter Eater Lad, The Flash, and Doll Man. And Christopher had only heard the usual big three as well at that point, of Batman, Superman, and Aquaman. He hates Aquaman with a passion, really doesn't like Batman because of the rumors that he's heard, but doesn't realize that basically Batman was like him at one point. Killing his enemies because, um, just because he can, and the fact is that, that he didn't know about the events that led up to the death of Superman during Justice League. Spoiler alert. And so that was a little bit of um, Christopher Smith from the show. I want you guys to be able to go and watch it yourself so you can form your own opinions. So this is why I'm only giving you a small version of this today. Uh, so let's talk about now the comic version. And we'll see the major differences here. Christopher Smith, Peacemaker 1 in the comics, was born to an army officer who became a statesman eventually, and an unknown mother who was a scientist, but she also did research on the side. And he became quite a skilled flying, quite skilled at flying a fighter jet, his interest in science and money came from both his parents. So Christopher was eventually appointed a diplomat to the U.S. Peace Envoy during the Geneva Arms Convention. So basically he was promoted to, basically brought in as a peace diplomat, and yeah. Chris attempted to stop an international bad guy known as Bork. Yeah, they actually came, they couldn't come up with a name better than that apparently. Bork was the option to go with. And it comes to the realization that he cannot simply use his normal tactics to resolve it. So when, when the regular measures do not work against his opponents, he would become Peacemaker. So, unlike the show, the Kalama character only becomes Peacemaker when it's a last resort. He only becomes a character, that this particular author mm -hmm. or guy, when uh, everything else has already failed. And basically, he would use a more evasive tactic. So he would use a little bit more extreme attacks extreme tactics when it came down to it and he eventually got, gained the notion that he loved peace so much that he was even willing to fight and kill for it smith thinks crafted his signature costume a bunch of weapons that would not kill so basically non-lethal weapons and for his peacemaker so it's kind of similar to what we have in the show the, pan, the tan pants the boots the red shirt, the blue epaulets, the peace mate, the dove, the chrome helmet. Still looks like a toilet bowl. So there is similarities there, but not very many, it seems. Or we haven't gotten a full backstory. All we know is that Dad's trying to kill Chris in the show. And when his traditional tactics would not work, he adopted the peacemaker persona, giving him choices, chances to express himself. So he was able to express himself more aggressively when he was peacemaker and not... Just Christopher Smith, the diplomat. Christopher worked out of his private manor in the Swiss Alps and the cliffs below 
in his home helped hide his activities as peacemaker. Hmm. Doesn't that sound familiar about somebody? He's got he's wears a black cape, runs around like a bat, and people fear him. Doesn't that sound like Bruce Wayne? So maybe Christopher Smith is a delusional Bruce Wayne. Who knows? So what I've done for you right now is I've given you a little bit of Christopher Smith on TV and then showing you the difference between the character of the comic and the comics. There's one subtle difference. Different so, but they're mostly quite the same. I do recommend checking out the show Peacemaker. It's on, if you have it, in, if you're in Canada watching this, it's on Crave. Pretty fun to watch. I only, like I said, I'm only on episode four. I enjoy it though. Or if you're living in the United States and you're watching this, um, I would suggest checking it out on HBO Max. So let the multiverse be your guide and let it lead you down directions which you want to go. My name is Rogue Convoy and this has been Ultimate Mayhem Peacemaker Edition.